I know. Well, I'm not on the internet. It's like, I'm not a. Is it gonna uh, function? I use Instagram, but I'm a little bit of a luddite, so I've learned a lot. <laughs> Me too. Chrissy carries our team. She, <laughs> like, I know I'm, very little. <laughs> I'm posting up a storm. Well, so. I know. I loved that. I loved the ones that you just did that were sort of like a preview of yeah. what you're going to be talking Excellent. about. Good. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, now I'm like super excited too cool. about like what you're going to be sharing. The work yeah, this that's is behind Tim you is of us. So yeah, Nick, oh, Chick, man. and Miles, and Gracia. Yeah, printed that at Open Studio. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Well, we're super excited to have you. I'm sorry, like, uh, Anna's been very patient with me because I first was like an entire week behind in August because apparently I don't like use a calendar properly anymore. And then I think I just smashed your first name and like the beginning of your last name together. So anyways, I apologize for all the amazing sloppiness of me. I'm blaming on everything on the stories. pandemic. I feel like we all have get out of jail free cards. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely been a time. That's for but sure. On that topic of pandemic, what does Open well, Studio look yeah. like right now? Yeah, and I'm maybe sure. also introduce yourself. Um, so yeah, let's start yeah, there. Yeah, let's start there. It's so hard when you're like, I just uh, well, my name is Anna Gaby Trotz. I am an artist and the technical director at Open Studio in Toronto. Um, so I've been there for five years now, which is crazy. Time has sort of flown by. Um, and I also do um, sessional teaching for OCAD University um, and the University of Guelph. And I've done some teaching with Halliburton School of the Arts as well. So that's part of my creative practice as well in print. Um, open Studio is now open. We opened last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yay! It was a real, uh, a real time figuring out how to open a hands-on print studio with shared facilities in a pandemic. Um, so it took a lot of time to do that safely. Um, yeah, we're still not like we're yeah. not twenty four seven access, and and that's why I'm actually not in the studio right now because members are in, so they're able to print from noon to five. Um, and everyone has to wear masks and all of that. So I figured an Instagram live in a mask is maybe not the most exciting. <laughs> it would be it's, a yeah. first time. Maybe we'll do another yes. one in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, is everybody allowed to come or is it like limited? Do you have to like sign up so that there's not yeah, too many people uh, in the space? Or? Yeah, we've got online booking now. Um, it, I mean, Open Studio was sort of founded on 24-7 open access, um, so we've had to limit that so we can clean. Um, and right now it's just, it's people with uh, keys who can get into, because 401 Richmond is also unlimited hours, because um, they're not getting the traffic oh, okay. right now through the door and, and don't want an empty building that's open. Um, so yeah, we're starting slowly and then hopefully in the fall, we'll start to open up more spaces. We're having just like one artist per area per day so that we can just keep it really kind of simple and clean and no crossover of people working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's a beautiful yeah. big space which makes that at least a little bit easier in terms of like yeah, spacing sure. people and out. Um, if you haven't ever been to Open Studio, yeah. it's so gorgeous. And when it's actually open to the public again, I would highly recommend yeah, it's a beautiful going studio. to studio. And um, yeah, the old warehouse high ceilings will I think serve us well in this time. And yes. yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're hopeful. We're, um, we've got our online classes. Um, sorry, our class is online. So we're going to start with um, just four people per class, small, small group sizes, and uh, see what the world does in the fall. <laughs> 
<laughs> I hope that you, I, ju I, judging by your reaction, you can also read that Open Studio just posted oh, nice. for blushing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, and we were supposed to have you here this summer, so I'm like, it's been yeah. really a bummer uh, here. We are not open at all. Our space is so tiny. Um, I mean, we could, I guess, have one person in at a time, but there's no washroom um, except for in our home, so yeah. it's just too complicated. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad that printmakers are able to print somewhere, and we're I mean, this is not the same as having you here printing in the shop and being in the house, but I'm really, really glad that this worked out and that we could have you at least in some capacity yeah, sure. join and us this summer. Yeah, forward to coming in person <laughs> to your studio. Yeah. We one are day, <laughs> One day soon. Whenever that mm. might be. Yeah. So the way that this little system works is... Uh, it kind of grew out of wanting to be able to st still like share and um, promote and talk about artists that we like love and have worked with or, you know, would love to work with. We have someone that we're going to share today that we don't know them at all. Um, and so basically we just kind of pull three arts out of our flat files or now we're starting to pull them off of our shelves and walls because we want to not just show print. Uh, and then you as well will share three pieces and, uh, and we just kind of like talk about the work and who the artist is. And then afterwards I'll post everything up on our, um, stories so that people can take a look and, and see the pieces there. And we'll link back to the artists if they have pages. Sometimes, you know, they're not people that have Instagram, which is also fine. So um hey, you it's a bit of show and tell or we could yeah okay, like i like it garden, uh which we you know yeah yeah um so whoever wants to start can yeah. start if you want us why, to start, why don't you, you start can, or if you want to start you can yeah all right sounds good uh it's over so the first one we have is in a frame so hopefully it won't be like too hellish in its reflection i just didn't want to Let's take see. it out so it's a little I can see it. A little it. reflective. Is Kyle taking I'll pop it out. Mm. Okay, apparently Kyle's going to pop it out. Okay. Um, so we uh, are super lucky and have a friend, Landon, who's done like a lot of print work with um, other artists. And he and Kyle did a bunch of trading of artwork. And so we got some work from different people that Landon has worked with in the past. So that's what this piece is. It's You're not, like, it's not going to come out. It's screwed into the first. Oh, it's okay. Oh, yeah. It's visible. Ugh. So this piece, um, if I just like tilt it yeah. like this, is by artist um, Jay Ryan. Oh, there we go. So he's a Chicago printmaker. And he's been working in screen since the like 90s. He trained under a master printer who I no longer remember the name of, but I feel like maybe the first name was Steve. Um, it's on his website. And then he started printing like in his basement. And I love that about screen is that you can just not always easily, you still have to know the process, but like you could set up mm -hmm. like it's screen one of the printing. More accessible ones. Yeah, it is. Like it is something yep. that you could set up in your house. And mostly worked with like bands. So he was in a band. So it was a lot of like band posters. And I, from what I can gather, that's still like predominantly like his practice is like working with different bands. Um, so this one uh, is called End of Summer. So I thought it was sort of appropriate. And it's like all these, he, he has a lot of like animals that are in his work all of the time. Usually, I think he's kind of most known for this little squirrel that he's done. But this one's like a little fox and then kind of this little bear. Um, and they're surrounded by just like a bunch of trash and cut down forest. And one of their comrades looks either like fallen dead or ill over here. Um, and I think right now we're just seeing so much um, animosity between like locals and tourists in Prince Edward County because it's getting a little hectic and there's a lot of like complaints about garbage and traffic and people not being able to get out of their driveways because the lines to the sandbanks are so long. Uh, like that was kind of like a perfect little print to sort of um, think about the end of summer here and also just like I just love the style of this work with all of the like lines and 
cross hatching. There's a lot of like yeah, I love that. and energy. Going you said that's a, it's a screen like. print. Yeah, yeah. It almost looks it's like a, a screen a, print. A yeah, cut or lino cut. I love the line work. Yeah, it does have like a it does yep. have that kind of vibe to it. You're that's so true. Like the way that the hatching, um, especially yeah. in this like fox creature. Yeah, so I just like really like this print. I didn't know about his work until Landon um, traded this piece with us. So it's a uh, yeah, it's a nice little art to have in our space. Just plop it up. We're good. Ooh. Make sure that's on <laughs> Oh, that the thing is on securely. Yeah. Nice. So that's our first share, Great. the Jay Ryan piece. Um, I I think his shop like. I think if you wanted to like look him up, the shop name is the Bird Machine. So it's not. It, I don't think he has anything under his actual name. I'll check it out. It's under his. Shop yeah, name. I love uh, what you said about screen being accessible. I learned. I learned how to screen print at yeah. Guelph, and then I actually printed shirts on my parents' kitchen table. After undergrad, I'd go and I'd print. I'd shoot screens at Open Studio, and then I'd go back to their house and set up a little studio clean the screens out in the bathroom and it was, it was really fun. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. When we first started, we didn't have like a pressure washer or anything. So we were taking oh. screens to a car wash and blowing yeah. them out at the car wash, which worked, but also the pressure of it's like a, a car wash pressure washer is you have to stand basically on the other side of the car wash and shoot it at the screen at an angle. So you don't yeah. just blast a whole. Yeah, it works. Screen. One you of our artists, like, Megan Winsley did that. Lesson during the pandemic because she had to clean out some screens and we were closed so she was like yeah I went to the car wash it's a great idea <laughs> why not yeah we've been shooting some screens and blowing out screens for people that just so that yeah people can still yeah be working sure. if yeah. they want to yeah yeah um shall it, i share it's a challenging a part um, yes okay i'm gonna share my newest print also it's it is in plastic, but it is a uh, an image from a trip that I did right after grad school. Um, I got a grant from the Alberta Foundation of the Arts to go through the Northwest Passage, documenting um, changing landscape and climate change. Um, so I spent two weeks on an icebreaker and um, got to travel. Um, started in Copper Mine um, in uh, Nunavut and then ended in Greenland. So went uh, from west to east and then up wow. over the top of Baffin Island um, and then across to Nook, Greenland. Um, so this is a, a photo etching I did actually for a portfolio um, at Southern Graphics uh, called Going to Ground. Oh, that nice. Stud from OCAD and I organized. Um, and so I just, I loved the, uh, the idea of this sort of melting, uh, fading away ice, because that's really what is happening in our, uh, in our day-to-day -day existence, that uh, the environment is really breaking down mm -hmm. and changing. Um, so this is one of the few prints. The, uh, the great thing about being a technical director is that you get to work with lots of artists, um, but you don't get to make a ton of your own work. So... I'm always excited when I have a, a reason to get into the studio and make work. Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> we understand that big yeah. time. That's a beautiful print. Like what I see yeah, when I saw it on the website, I was like, is this a print or is this like, yeah, it's a, a photograph because yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. My geeky self wants to know what plates you were using. Were you using like the KM? Um, no, it was plates, actually or, like... a copper plate laminated copper with a, a film called Pure Etch. So you can actually etch right into mm. the, uh, the copper and then you print um, an acetate with a really fine half tone and then shoot that onto the plate, develop it, and then etch it into the copper. Yeah, so you can. This is, I'll just share one more because it relates to it. Um, but this is actually one of the first prints that I did after getting back uh, from Edmonton in grad school at Open Studio. So it's a combination of uh, photo etching and dry point. So the great thing about working 
oh, offers nice. you can work so back nice. into it. Yeah, I love, you can see the like edge of that one, which is so beautiful. Yeah. What was that experience uh, it was incredible. Like? Um, it was, I mean, I got to get onto, it was uh, the time when um, like the Northwest Passage was just opening up for, I, I mean, tourism really. Yeah. Um, so I did go on a, um, it was a Russian research vessel um, that had been converted into a sort of tourist ship. So I, uh, I got on the boat and I like climbed up the little gangway and they looked at me and most of the people who were on the trip were retired. And so they were like, are you on the right trip? Are you a passenger? And it's like, yep, I'm here to photograph. And I had all my gear and it was, uh, I mean, a great way to, I'll never be able to afford to travel like that again but um it was a it was yeah. a really amazing way to travel through the land because you're just you're so close to the water um and on this trip we did a lot of trips um by zodiac so we were actually able to go out and actually hike right on the land um wow yeah. that is yeah. so Super cool. amazing how long was the, it was how two long weeks. Was the trip from two weeks there to Greenland? yeah and uh, yeah, long enough so that when I got back to Ottawa, I realized I was land sick. I'd never, I'd never had that feeling. But I was just yeah. standing, and all of a sudden, I was like, I feel like I'm moving, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> My sister was like, uh, she worked on like a tall ship um, that was kind of like a, like a youth camp, um, and she worked as crew. And so they would be gone on this tall ship for like the whole summer. And when she would come back, yeah, she would yeah. get really quite ill yeah, no one, for the first yeah. little bit of being back home. Yeah. I did. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's such a cool trip to go on. Yeah. That's really awesome. Okay. Next chair. So our next chair isn't um, print, but it is in the world of multiples. So uh, I apologize the dead plant in this, but I thought that this little kind of fern looked cute, even though it was, um, okay. it's, it died a long time ago. So but, it's cute. Um, so I wanted to share a friend of ours, uh, her pottery, because she recently opened up a shop in Picton. And I just think her pottery is so, I don't know, it's kind of like harkens back to like the seventies and it's really like tactile and gorgeous. Um, and we just have two Beautiful. pieces of hers, but she makes like all sorts of wonderful things. And she was actually um, a sculpture and installation grad from OCAD. Uh, so her studio is called Yellow Studio and it's like Y-E-1-1-O-W. And uh, her name is Dawn uh, Staff Race. I hope that I'm saying your name properly, yeah, right. Dawn. Uh, but yeah, she like, she just has this like, this beautiful tactile quality. So like this part here, you can see because of the highlight from the window is like a, a glaze. And then this is just like the raw clay. So it just feels really good. And then this is one of her mugs. I'm drinking my coffee out of it. And it also just like, it has this like ribbing to it that just feels really nice in your hand. And I think like her palette is really to my taste. It's like soft and, kind of natural and raw um yeah i just like i think that pottery i, I mean we talk about this a lot and I think maybe it's because we're into print but sometimes like craft i feel like can go overlooked or like you don't appreciate it as much um in an art sense by comparison to say like a painting or a sculpture and so um for me i just feel that it's so nice to be able to like hold someone's practice in my hand like every day and have this like relationship with it and feel those considerations that the maker decided like how this like feels to hold it the way that the kind of like I don't know how you would describe this like almost like you could feel that her fingers in the clay in the way that the texture on the side of it feels when you're touching it. I'm terrible at describing the play apparently, but it just feels really good. It's hard to describe. Like you can see the yeah, yeah. like, yeah. can you see the like ribbing? 
So it just makes it, like, yeah. holding it feel really good in a way that, like, you know, this Starbucks cup that Kyle is drinking out of is not. It's so boring. Um, so, yeah, I just, like, I thought that I would share some some craft uh, work. I think I have, like, a, a real, I guess, love for pottery. I wish that I could afford it, uh, first off. But, like, I think that as somebody who does make multiples, I can really appreciate it. And I can also, I like, I'm also really jealous of it. Like, a potter can, like, really turn out the quantity and printmaking is not the same. Not that. No. <laughs> Actually, my, dad, uh, no. my dad's a it's potter. not the same. And uh, he has a, a oh, pottery really? studio in his basement in Parkdale in Toronto. So he's converted the basement. It's got a kiln room and um, a, uh, a slab roller and all sorts of tools. And it's really cool. But yes, I know. Oh, That's well. awesome. Well, it, yeah, Dawn had been working. She built herself a studio um, just outside of Picton and had been working in there. And then it just, she kind of outgrew it like within a couple of years. And so she recently um, moved shop to right on the main street in Picton in this gorgeous um, building. And so it's like, yeah, high ceilings. It's really like such a beautiful space. Uh, I feel like I feel for her because she opened, you know, yeah. this Before year pandemic. when, you know, I, I, I feel like it's been so busy in town and it's probably hopefully is still, yeah. you know, totally fine. But yeah, it's a tough time for makers. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. it yeah. is a tough yeah. time for makers, but. You know, I, I think that what she's doing is absolutely amazing. And you can, you know, obviously, like, support her online. Like, a lot of makers mm -hmm. have really figured out that, which is great. Um, but, yeah, I think I have a soft spot for pottery as well. And I don't know. It's just, like, I love, like, maybe because I, like, have watched so much pottery videos. And I, I did a little bit, but it's, like, yeah, it's not my uh, material. Uh, so I just love, like, knowing... Like, I can see how things are made, so you can really, like, I guess, like, feel that visceral, hands-on quality yeah. when you're, like, yeah. holding it, which I love. We were talking to friends about sharing more about printmaking processes, because there's this disconnect. Like, people don't really know what it oh. looks like to, yeah. like, make a copper, um, like, photo etching. Like, yeah. we know what you're talking about, but... The public doesn't. Mm -hmm, there's this, like distance between the results yeah. and the process whereas i think pottery yeah you can see it you know yeah. that the hand was there and you know and every, yeah you well, can, yeah okay there no. was no hand involved in this one <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no i'm i'm a huge supporter True. of i love buying pottery as gifts i love um my dad started a shop in toronto called clay design and so they've been there for on harvard and brunswick i want to say for 40 years like it's been a long time um what? and Whoa. uh yeah it's just beautiful to go in and choose something from someone you know and know that you're directly supporting an artist I think that's so important now like now even more so like if you can't yeah. buy a big piece of art like just buy buy a small piece <laughs> yeah buy an adorable pot that can hold a dead yeah I had a dead burn like that. I got rid of it though. I, I actually got it in pink. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's like, it kind of yeah. looks cute. I thought though, that was the bit. art piece know. for a second. It's like, oh, it's so lifelike. It's so... Wow. Yeah. I mean, it could be. Excellent. So, yeah, that's our second chair. Um, okay. I feel like this is like Christmas when you're like handing out gifts. Uh, maybe I'll talk about yeah. this one. Um, so this is an etching that I did in the studios up in um, Kinnate, which is formerly known as Cape Dorset. Um, and so that's on, uh, oh. on Baffin Island. And so um, yes, this it is, is like a beautiful a dream studio. Of mine to go there. And um, Open Studio has had a long partnership with, um, with Dorset Fine Arts and the West Baffin Eskimo Cooperative. Um, and so in 2015, we had um, the opportunity to have Tim Pitsilat come down to Open Studio, which is 
that print right there. Um, and uh, when he was down, he said, you have to come up and you have to see my office. And uh, the office, he, he calls the land, well, he called the land his office. So he wanted to, to take me out um, to, see, to see what he loved in Cape Dorset. Um, and so a year later, I was able to go up um, with Dorset Fine Arts and Open Studio um, and work with Shuvan Ayashuna in the studio. Um, and look at their etching equipment because they actually have, they've got um, stone lithography, plate lithography, um, and they have an etching facility, but um, there's not a lot of people who know how to etch in the community. Um, so part of my job at Open Studio is to go up, I've been up three times now, um, to look at the equipment wow. and get it ready so that this, actually I was supposed to be going up um, this summer to do a two week training, but that's not happening right now. Um, so this was, um, it's a print called journey to the past and, um, it is available at Dorset fine arts. And I think we have one at open studio as well. Um, and so it was really amazing to work with Shuvenai and see her drawing, um, translate from like mm -hmm. she just I don't know if you've seen her work but she has these like amazing sort of interior worlds that she um, she does in her drawings and uh, they get turned into prints um, and so this one she was working on a big bone drawing like a sort of five or six foot drawing um, and so I asked her to do some drawings on some plates with me and so this was I guess I should keep showing it because it's not up um, but this was um, one of the drawings that she did, and it's actually a Thule, um, uh old um, site um, that uh, Inuit people would have dwelled in on the land. And it's sort of, to me, like that journey to the past where you go back to to find something, and these people are up on the top of the boneyard. Um, I was yeah. going to ask yeah, if those were little, figures on the little top. Figure yeah, little oh, parents yeah, and two looking out. Yeah, yeah, and so that's, that's her other prints that she did. Um, this one got editioned as part of the uh, fall release, I think in 2016. Um, but she did another image, and it was uh, uh, two, it looked like young people, um, young Inuit people. And one of them was in a traditional seal skin um, coat. Um, and the other one was a very sort of modern looking youth. And the youth was holding this kudlet, which is like a, um, a lamp that's used for heating uh, shelter. And it's used whale blubber and I think moss to create a wick for it. Um, and so this youth was oh, holding okay. oh, this sort of, again, like this past, um, not a relic, but um, sort of this interesting place that I think Inuit culture is in between tradition and sort of modern times. And uh, so in this in the studio, um, do they have workshops for like the public to come in as well? Like, um, and then you can travel there and work in the studio. Um, do you just uh, there's not like a residence there. Like you have yeah. to like find yeah, accommodations. They do. Sometimes correct? they do artist yeah. residencies. Um, Dorset Fine Arts actually had a whole series that was supposed to happen this year. Uh, but again, that is, yeah, people from okay. Toronto are not welcome to fly up yeah. to remote northern communities for very good reasons. Um, so yeah, yeah sometimes fair. there's artist residencies. Um, and the, the co-op is, um, like the West Bath and Eskimo Cooperative is part of the co-op in Cape Dorset. So it's like the grocery store, it's the bank, it's, it's and all of the money that goes. Into it. Um, at the end of the year, it gets divided out amongst people who are co-op shareholders in the community so if you have a bank account oh, okay. always with the co-op um, so a lot of the art sales you know it goes back to the artist but um, profit gets divided out in the community so it's an interesting uh, yeah 
That's mm -hmm. really interesting. Yeah. I believe that there's a gallery or there was in Kingston that um, represented um, like a lot of the yeah. prints that are Yeah, because they do um, two collections, yeah. usually a fall and a spring release. Um, and so those mm -hmm. like basically galleries um, will buy the whole collection. And so there's usually 50 prints yeah. in that series and that goes out across Canada. Um, so. Yeah, I love mm -hmm. the stone it's really litho work. Yeah, it's yeah. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. So and the plate, beautiful. the plate litho they do is really amazing as well. Like just the colors and yeah, yeah. Awesome, that's so cool. Wow, you've done like uh, some really amazing. I've been really lucky traveling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love it. It's so wicked. All right, Kyle. Our share? Our third share is Kyle's mm. newest screen reveal. That's amazing. So it's been sort of a long, long time in the making. Here, I'll hold it, Kyle, and you can talk. Yeah. Uh, I finished up this print last week. I guess I should say, like, not safe for work. There are, like, there's no nipples, but. <laughs> 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 I think that gets around that, doesn't it? I don't know. I don't know the rules. Yeah, I finished this print last week. It's a six color screen print. Um, and I don't know, I think this was probably one of the more challenging prints I've had to do. Like, we don't have like a vacuum table or micro adjusting at our studio. So like, it's just like a table and a sheet of acetate and eyeballing it, essentially. Yeah. So I think I did pretty good. Um, the addition ended up being 17, which like, I'm pretty happy about that. And like with this print, I've been thinking a lot about like our the human relationship between us as humans and us in technology and how those lines, they are beginning to blur and blur and blur a little bit more. And so I was thinking a lot about like bionic enhancement and how weird it's going to kind of be when at some point in the future it is going to be like this thing that you can just buy and it, it comes like as like a parts assembly package and you can just put it together yourself like a DIY computer or something like that. Yeah. That. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. yeah, the color palette I really like. It's like soft, but also there's just something about this kind of like mechanic blue that I think is so, I don't know, makes me think of old. Blueprints? Blueprints, but also. Intention. What were those like? Books Carl Weems uses them a lot to, as reference. Popular science reference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Those like illustrated books. Yeah, I'm a fan of that like that language that comes with like uh, old drawings from the turn of the century or the late twenties, yeah. thirties, and forties. Um, I find that, like their their aesthetic translates yeah. really well into screen. Yeah, print. and how do you go about your drawing process? Like, do you start with an idea, or do you work from source material and then go back to? So I would call myself like a digital collage artist if I was going to say anything. Um, I end up scouring the internet for whatever kind of imagery I can find. And then from that, something will have to click. I'll look at it and be like, oh, this could turn into something. And I think with regards to this piece, I came across this image of this woman laying down. And I was, on the, I was originally on the hunt for something in the isometric land like looking for kind of that three quarter turn pose, I came across her and I was like, oh, oh, okay. I can totally see that being a body chopped apart. And then from there, the idea expands. So what I end up doing is I collect images, I compile them in Photoshop, I cut them in bits, I cut bits out, I cut them apart, and I restitch everything together into a rough. And then I redraw everything on top of it to actually get the like final, the prep step before yeah. making this. Yeah, I was going to say it has a real sort of like the hand is in it. Like I, I can see that. Yeah, none of it's like it, there's no weird yeah. Photoshop filter or anything like that. It's all like zooming in with like a six pixel brush and hand drawing everything and then hand drawing awesome. all of the trapping as well. And for me, like that was like a big, that's a big important step. Like I did a lot of work in university though, where I was trying to find like uh, I guess it was like, I kind of look at it as a gimmicky ways to make art. Like, oh, I'll make this kind of process do this thing for me. And so like, that will be the art. 
And so I was doing a lot of things with like math and kind of spiral graphy type stuff. And I discovered that like what lacked from it was that human hand and that element. And so since then I've been doing things that are very technical, nice. but hand drawn. And for me, that's like really, really important that yeah. that translates in there as opposed to just like some really clean, crisp, highly vectorized yeah. illustration. Yeah, that, we think about that a lot um, at Open Studio with projects with visiting artists, like how to translate what someone does into print without completely removing what that artist, like the importance of their hand and sort of understanding of material mm -hmm. in a process that can be very sort of technical and, and bold. Yeah, I guess they... You yep, guys do, do. the addition yep. there, don't you know? So like when like an artist who comes in who's like say a painter and they want to do a print, like they they don't know how to do any of the technical stuff. So like mm -hmm. how does how does that process work when you work with somebody who is not a printmaker? Yeah, I mean we do a lot of um I mean it used to be called we'd call it master printing. Um, but I, I like to call it collaborative printing because it really is like understanding how an artist works in their practice and then figuring out the best technique um, for it. So we, we have four visiting artists a year come through Open Studio and often they have no or very little print background. Um, and so I'll work with them to like, instead of thinking of like, you know, necessarily what technique do you want to work with first? Like, it's almost like what image do you want to make and how can we uh, put it through a print technique that will will bring out something in your work. Oh, right. cool. That yep. is a very different way of thinking about it. I definitely think like process. What am I going to make? I have a freshly batch of fresh batch yeah. of emulsion, <laughs> so I'm making screen prints for the next three months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and often it's time too. Like we have our our VA program, visiting artist program. It's sixty hours, so you know, if someone comes in, they're like, I want to do a 500 layer stone litho with uh, some letterpress and no, uh, finish don't. it up and screen, then I have to. <laughs> nope, you want to do a yeah. one color yeah. screen print. Yeah. <laughs> Two. I know, I love that about time and um, having people visit who maybe, we find that like, especially if they're recently out of undergrad, where like, I think time is just like a, totally it's different, different beast mm -hmm. um and especially for like reading proposals there's this notion that like saying you'll do too much will make your yeah. proposal seem more like worthy and for ah, us it's usually sure. like no like you want to do how many hand carved yeah. woodcuts no. No. in a week um no no that's not no. gonna and then it's just disappointing then it's yeah. like and and printmaking is one of those mediums where it like it senses fatigue and frustration like the material just like it just fall you can see it happen in the studio like someone's like this has never happened to me before and i'm just like you have to go home have a sleep come back and for whatever reason yeah you will not be having that trouble tomorrow <laughs> but, yeah it's, so, it's true. so true i don't know how many like we've gotten better with our like managing people's expectations and trying to like support people in a way that's like conducive to com completing the project successfully i feel like in the early years you know we would be like what insane idea do you have yeah. let's like just make it work and then there'd be so many like you know 4 a.m nights where i would be like woken up by a text message <laughs> being like i'm in the shop everything's garbage nothing's working and i'd be like i guess i'm printing their entire edition this evening or this morning yeah. um yeah so. i've learned um <laughs> yeah. param setting parameters are not it's not the same thing as like saying no because i'm a yes person like i i'll say yes <laughs> like yeah we can do that yes we can do that but then there is a point where you're just fighting material and it's the wrong, if it's the wrong material, it's the wrong mm -hmm. material. Like I'll tell people like if they come in and it should be done digitally, I'll just say, you know, this is not like, we could do it. It's gonna take 500 hours and cost you, you know, $30,000, but you could also <laughs> go to this digital print shop. <laughs> yeah, I recommend yeah. digitally yeah. printing. Yeah. Not to put myself out <laughs> yeah, of a job, but so uh, true. yeah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, some things just are not nope. meant to be hand printed. Yeah. And that is yeah. 
okay. Yeah, it's like you wouldn't do a yeah. painting yeah. for something that's meant to be like a sculpture. Like there's there's reasons material works mm -hmm. one way on another. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it is it's I interesting. Totally I'm sure you have the same things with, you know, people coming in and having really high expectations in your space. Well, We've gotten very good over the years of actually when people apply and they say like, I want to do A, B, C, yeah. D, E, and yeah. read a book. And you're like, okay, you have a week no. here. None of that's realistic. We've gotten a lot better with just being for like, just being upfront and saying, I think that this part of yeah. this project would be a success. And then we help right. them manage their expectations and then they actually yeah. have a really successful week yeah. as opposed yeah. to a disappointing week yeah, where they feel, didn't accomplish feel, everything. Yeah. Well, and I think like trying to also, you know, if we have someone coming from open studio that's used to like a vacuum table and, you know, mm -hmm. screens that are giant, being really upfront about the fact that like yeah. we don't have those things. So it doesn't yeah. mean you can't do what you want to do, yeah. but you're going to be doing it differently and you're going to have to learn to like dance in our studio. Yeah. That's going to be a different yeah. dance. Than I, I dance love that. And I think yeah. teaching teaches me that a lot too like working in different schools and like all the, like you're doing a demonstration yeah. and you're like whoa that didn't work the way that it did there and okay let's change this and I, I think being um being flexible in a video is really totally I think that's one of the things I really loved about printmaking is that there's you know you, you want to make an etching well there's like yeah. 20 different ways to go about that and it's like you run into a problem, you just think about it, like yeah. it's a lot of problem solving. So you think about, okay, I can fix this by this. Oh, it might be this or it might be this that's causing a problem. And uh, that's something yeah. I really yeah, love same. about our profession. I like that. The experimental and the unexpected that sometimes it's the accidents that happen yeah. that you're like, oh, that's actually better than what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You're like, oh, I can can't. I, I can't. Oh, yeah. well, I don't know. <laughs> There are times that it's like absolutely in like super frustrating. Like I think I spent about eight hours mixing these colors. And that's like that's just eight hours of mixing yeah. six colors. I remember in when we were at Queens and I had drawn this beautiful drawing on a litho stone. Oh. Um and I went to print it and I mean, you know, I was in third year, didn't really know what I was doing. And I broke the stone. It was little, so like, it wasn't like, you know, there wasn't like a huge backlash from like the tech and the professor or anything, oh. but it was soul crushing. Like not only was I just so embarrassed, but also yeah. it was like all that work, yeah. like just gone from like a very yeah. easily avoidable yeah. mistake. Lots of tears in the studio. Yeah. Uh, I had a student at yeah. who did that. And you just kind of, I mean, it's hard not to kind of smile. Like now knowing what I know, I'm kind of like, well, it just, it happens. Like it's, could just be like an imperfection in the stone or, you know, you were up till five o'clock in the morning and you set the pressure wrong. <laughs> and there's sobbing. Yeah. It's My dad's a, a marble sculptor. And I remember once when I was like little, he had gotten stone from like, uh, like a, Canadian piece of marble and he usually gets things from Italy and he had carved this like amazing head it was sort of like a, a head and a torso he does a lot of like figurative work and there he's really good at finding fault lines but he must have missed it and he went to chisel out something oh. in the neck and the whole head fell off <laughs> of this sculpture mm. and I, re I remember like just like you could hear him like swearing in his studio, like, cause you know, like, no. it just fell off. And then he was like, well, I guess it's just a torso it. now. Like, that's what I'm going to make. It wasn't like, a commission okay. for someone of a <laughs> portrait? Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, no. <laughs> but you know, sometimes you do have to get... roll with the punches. That's a big yeah. roll with the punches though. Yeah. Oh, I guess we should let um, you get okay. to your third one. So I'm going to share, this is a book. And uh, so a few Holy. years ago, almost three years ago now, I was invited on this cross Canada trip 
called um, Canada C3. So it was with students on ice. Um, and they, they did, basically they traversed all of Canada's coasts um, by icebreaker ship with, uh, there were artists, there were scientists, politicians, um, people from the public, teachers, um, all sorts of different people on the ship. Um, and so I was invited for the final leg. It was split into 15 different sections. So my section was from Campbell River, BC to Victoria. So I was invited as uh, the artist on board for that portion. And so the book is a collection of um, stories, writing, thoughts from the participants on the trip. Um, so I, I wrote a piece called um, Unsettled. And it was about meeting um, the specifically the three Indigenous women who were on our trip, um, who really were so generous in sharing their stories and their perspectives on Canada, um, even though they didn't have to, um, and even though it took a lot out of them to share. Um, one of the, the women on the trip was um, Lillian Howard, and um, she was actually a residential school survivor. And so she shared her story with us um, and just really, um, I mean, I had known about, you know, the things going on in Canada and our colonial history and past, but I don't think I'd really understood how present it is in everyday life. And, you know, Lillian said, she said, like, Anna, if, if you think this is over, like the, the oppression facing indig Indigenous people, um, especially Indigenous women, it's not. And she was like, I'm afraid every time I get into a taxi cab, I'm afraid every time I walk down the street, I have relatives who are missing. Um, and this is, this is happening. Um, and so um, that was a really, really sort of powerful part of my experience as an artist. Um, often I'm traveling north and looking at northern landscapes and and really thinking about on this trip, like how as a settler, um, I can be an ally for Indigenous people and start to work with that in my own work as well and being really sensitive moving forward to um, how do you create these sort of images of the North that aren't just appropriating images and and that's something I haven't answered that mm -hmm. question um, and it's something in in new work uh, that I want to make I really want to think about that that's sort of what I was going to do at Sparkbox this <laughs> but I'll have lots of time to percolate but I yeah I mean I think that's so important to like be critical with yourself about how you were talking about these things yes. and representing them and that's that is so powerful that you had the opportunity to hear you know stories firsthand and to have people who wanted to share them um yeah. in a space where they felt comfortable yeah and, and like the irony so. of traveling on you know a, a ship painted like a canadian flag was not lost on on people um in vancouver we had a, a presentation um, of Canada 150 plus and so Lillian was part of this group basically that was saying like there's a lot of people left out of Canada 150 and this trip was celebrating Canada 150 um, and so this organization in Vancouver had made 150 plus to start to include Indigenous people in that dialogue um, and so I actually on the trip I was really inspired by that and I went to get the um i wanted to get the logo made so that we could install it in vinyl on the outside of the ship and i had this huge disagreement with jeff green who's he's the the uh he runs students on ice and he was like well first he said like you won't be able to get the vinyl made in time you just have a day in vancouver and so i was like it's on jeff it's on don't tell me i can't do it so i spent the day running around vancouver getting these big vinyl things cut I got permission from the city of Vancouver um, and so I arrived at the end of the day I had to walk through like the Lower East Side like I went places I probably never should have been and I arrived with these two vinyls one sticker and 
and uh, and one vial cut out. And I was like, I want to put it on the outside of the ship. And he was like, you can't. Like, it is in conflict with our funders, the Canadian government, who... And, and so I had this kind of drunken night with Elizabeth May from BC, who was on the trip. And uh, so she was like, just do it. We'll sneak out in the dead of the night and we'll do it, Anna. And I was like, I can't, I'm gonna, like, they're gonna kick me off this ship. Like, I can't do it. Like, you have nothing to lose. You're the leader of the Green Party. Like, I am just, you know, the <laughs> artist on board. Like, I'm not gonna make it. And so I didn't do it, but we did end up, we installed it on the inside of um, the ship had a big hangar where people did murals and lots of art and all of our discussions happened. Um, so Jeff did say, like, install it in here. Um, and we did a ceremony, uh, which was really amazing. And then I actually was able to install it um, at uh, the University of Victoria. We did this final meet and greet. And I brought my little stick, my sticker with me. And so I got up to talk about art at the end. And um, I had asked, I met Sheila Rogers, who was the chancellor of UVic. And I said, I've got this piece. Here's the story. I want to put it up. And she was like, that sounds cool. Like, let's do it. And so I got up to talk about art. And Jeff gave me the microphone. And then I was like, and Jeff, just one more thing. Uh, the last thing I want to do is install this vinyl at the University of Victoria. And then I handed him the microphone back. And uh, we did another sort of rogue vinyl making at the UVic. But it was just it was really, and, and I, awesome. like I, I talked to Jeff during this pandemic time because I was like, did I, like, did I overstep? Like, as an artist, like, I was in conflict. And I understand, like, as someone, you know, who organizes things for organizations, like, sometimes you just can't do the things that you want to do. And so he's saying no, and I'm saying why. And, you know, I was like, maybe I could have learned more from you not fighting you. Like maybe there was a way that we could have actually engaged in in dialogue, but I was blinded by, you know, really wanting to support uh, the women on the trip and and what I was feeling. And he was like, "No, it was amazing. Like he was like, it 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 was great. Like you had a voice and you spoke out, and it happened just the way it was supposed to. So it was a really interesting, interesting. Trip. Yeah." I can, I, I do think, um, like, I, I really love, like, your sort of, like, reflection back on the things that you're doing, the things that you've done, and trying to take those moments and say, okay, what could I learn from this? Like, the fact that you, you know, obviously have sort of ruminated on that, and then have have taken that initiative to like reconnect with that person and say, mm -hmm. could I, could we have done this a different way to accomplish a, a better goal? Um, but yeah. I also love that he was like, no, because I do think sometimes you need yeah. someone to just like, ah, yeah. like shake things up and, and say, you know, yes. this could be better. Yeah. You could do this yeah. better yeah. than what you're and doing. And sometimes people um, need help with a voice. Like but, they just need, you need to be that, yeah. that amplifier. Um, which I think is, that's a really important role that artists have to step back and support. And sometimes that's, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 And I, I think we like all right now have like so many opportunities and I think it's really important for us to be mm -hmm. thinking about that mm -hmm. kind of every day with what we're doing, especially as people that are part, you know, of a, a bigger organizational mm -hmm, mm -hmm. structure um, to to be really like conscious of um, yeah like how we're operating and mm -hmm. what we're mm -hmm. saying and what we're sharing and what we're doing and yeah yeah mm -hmm. like coming out of like everything this summer but it's really made us consider how we position mm -hmm. ourselves as an organization and the things that um, that we need to remind ourselves not to just become complacent like you know how can we do this better for our community and what can we be doing to support some of those other communities yeah and who do you leave out just by accident like that's a big thing we're looking at open studio is like yes you know you write oh we're open and accessible and yeah we are yes we are uh, but we also have a lot of work to do and there's also you know a 50-year history at open studio that has left people out so when you say you know we're open 
Like I might experience that, you might experience that, but someone else might not experience that or might be triggered by something mm -hmm. that you, you're not even, you know, you're not aware of because of privilege. So it's, it's an interesting time yeah. to not yeah. get paralyzed by it. Like you still have to do the good things that you do, but open doors for, you know, people who've been marginalized. I think that that's a really important thing. Yeah, well, and I think like, I mean, you're hearing it more often now, but also like, yeah, not stopping because you're scared of saying it yeah. wrong or doing it wrong. And when someone does say like, mm, no, not being like, okay, well, never yeah. mind. I'll never do a thing again. And being like, oh, yeah. yep, I see it now. And I can, I can definitely yeah. do better next time. And that's a change that I can make. And I'm really glad that you pointed it out instead of yeah. being, being defensive. yeah, defensive and embarrassed and yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just we'll get things down. wrong, but uh, that's, that's the way of it. Like discomfort is learning. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. It sounds like you've like done, like Leanne was saying, like the trips that you've been like a part of have been not only incredible, but also just such a valuable look at different areas of Canada than like our little sort of Southern. Yeah. So yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Really fortunate to be the place, like have been able to go to the places that I've, I've been to and meet the people. Like, I think that that, you know, connecting yeah. um, with the community up in Kenite, um, connecting through the C3 trip, it's been, it, it really has changed how I think about art making um, and living in, in Canada. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you thank so you. much for sharing with us and for coming mm -hmm. online. It was really like, yeah. such a great conversation and nice yeah. to see your face thank and yeah. And here's the yep. update of the open studio. We're open. We have a fundraiser on October again. 7th, our first ever online fundraiser called Future Proof. I need all the help we can get because uh, this has not been uh, an easy road for any places that do art and community yeah. work. So I. Yeah, we'll shoot us that information too and we'll good. be sure Thanks to so post much. it. All right. Have a great day. Awesome. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye. -bye. Thanks.